If you have kids in school like I do, or maybe you have nieces, nephews, grandchildren, you just might be concerned about everything that's happened during the pandemic from an educational standpoint, social and emotional needs. Well, I would love for you to take a journey with me to two schools, one public, one private, to see just how much the teachers, administrators, students, and even parents are really stepping up to make sure that we are all set to go when the fall arrives. I'll say the word, you say the word, and then we tap out the first sound we hear. Are you ready? Yeah. Big. Big. No, that was good. That sounded good. Good to be back in person to wrap up the school year. Hidden Valley Elementary School in Charlotte, like most schools, has bounced back and forth between in-person, virtual, and hybrid learning models. Principal Daniel Gray says the biggest obstacle through it all has been the relationship building between the teachers and students. I have you know, some, some clips of teachers who went and they stood outside the door and held up a whiteboard and, and wrote out math problems and, and, and showed the kid through the door so that the kid would understand and, and, and knew what was going on. Times three in each. Is that our equation that we need in this problem? No. no. Third grade teacher Haley Austin recalls some of her visits to student families. Anything to get the kids on, to get the kids learning was worth it. Um, and it really made us know the families more. Um, I feel like I always have a pretty good relationship with, with my parents, but this year, I mean, being in their houses, and they were awesome. They welcomed us in with open arms. Another thriving relationship that surfaced during the pandemic is the one between the school, neighborhood residents, students at the University of North Carolina at Charlotte, and UNCC's Charlotte Action Research Project. They launched a virtual tutoring program that meets every Saturday morning. The focus is literacy and reading comprehension. They're not just talking about just literacy. They're talking about other issues that excites the children, what interests they have. So they're making a relationship, getting the students to talk. And the more they talk and then they listen to more intelligent speak coming from those instructors on the UNC side, it's going to just definitely broaden those students' horizon. I had a kid that I talked to the other day, a student that said, I know all these different people and they all care about me. And, and that, you know, that, that'll touch your heart. Also at the heart of Hidden Valley's approach is not being defined by a Title I status or achievement gaps, but rather a mission to excel by addressing the students' social and emotional needs as well as the academic ones. Camp CMS coming up this summer, uh, we have one of the highest enrollments um, in the district uh, with our students attending those camps and we're trying to get even more of our students in those camps. And it's not just for students who are struggling, but for enrichment as well. So when they come back in the fall, they're closer to closing that gap. Something else coming back in the fall? The use of technology, which the teachers and staff learned, is a huge asset. I can tell any kid in my classroom, go to this website, click on this, and do this, and they're there within two minutes, and that's never happened before. That technological savviness has played a major role at Friendship Day School for the Sciences and the Arts as well, a private elementary school in Charlotte that conducted the majority of the school year via Zoom. What I would say, and especially being there with him every day, um, seeing the virtual learning, um, the children have truly excelled. The plant traps the bug. And Angela Rivers' nephew, Amari, holds the school record of never missing a day since kindergarten, whether in person or virtual. And he's in the third grade now. Talk about loving the environment. My favorite part about FDS is the teachers and the head of school. A head of school and teachers who have worked diligently to thrive even in a virtual environment. I think it was a combination of several things. One, our scholars uh, have a tremendous support at home. Uh, their families are wonderful and they expect the best for them. Then here at school, our expectations are very high. So is the spirit of competition. These FDS third graders were in the building for their standardized test, only the second time the entire school year that they've been together in the classroom. It is very new for me to be in person with all my kids or all my friends, but after a while it was great. Simone, like many of these third graders, has been with the school since it started in 2017. Head of school Linda Comer says it took some planning, but they were able to maintain all of the unique activities, including mindfulness, Suzuki violin lessons, and Scholar TV, all done virtually. We did not want our 
scholars just to sit there and have to look at the screen. There are other things that we can do along with that virtual program and so we began to install and initiate those things like physical education. Speaking of physical education, to wrap up a week of testing, these scholars did a multiplication relay race. I've learned that making games out of lessons really work with children. Everyone was cheering each other on. They were saying things like, use your strategies, remember the strategy. Strategy is also being used to plan for next school year, including making use of learning apps and tools discovered during the pandemic. Also because of spacing in the classroom, we will also probably use part of Zoom. We will probably use their breakout rooms for small group instruction. Instruction and then some. If you don't love them, you can't lead them. And if you don't serve them, you can't save them. And so we love our children who are at this school. So a couple of the themes that we've seen, whether it's Hinton Valley Elementary or Friendship Day School, is this idea of really caring for the students and meeting them where they're at, whether it's maybe doing a tutoring program to increase reading comprehension or just having them get up and move in the middle of the day. There are plenty of things that schools have learned throughout this pandemic to really propel their students going forward. So I encourage you, Check out your own school, pull back a couple layers and see what nuggets are there that can really help your kiddos get off to a great start as we go into the next school year. For Carolina Impact, I'm Barbara Lash. We hope you enjoyed the story. If you don't want to miss any more great stories about the Charlotte region, please subscribe to our YouTube channel.